Seriously, dude, you're wrecking all the chairs. I took the whole evening aligning those chairs up, and you just punch a chair. You're supposed to be a helpful robot. Like, this is just, this is just inconsiderate. You're gonna clean all this up. You thought I left, didn't you? I bet you did. You thought I'd never see me again. But I'm back. By popular demand. I, I, I lied. There's not. There's not. There's a bit of demand. There, there's. Some. I know you're probably thinking five months is a long time, and where the hell have you been, and what have you done? You must have finished that game that you started back in 2020. That uh, you know, the first-person shooter game. That's going to be your first game on Steam that you started. That you, that is supposed to be great. Genuinely, guys, I have made some good progress on the FPS game over the last five months. Given I work a full-time job and the amount of family stuff going on and travel I had to do over the last five months, uh, really excited to show you guys what we have for today. I finally feel like we now have a solid game direction that we're headed in and a foundation that we can build on. Welcome to the Ark, where discovery means survival. Some of the most notable developments I've made since the last devlog is I've been really fleshing out and building out the level to create that sense of scale being on a research center in space. I think that's really important to try and set the scene for the player. First thing I did is I took out a pen and paper and started drawing out the level designs, ideas of what I wanted the game to look like, the different concepts, and this has really helped me come up with some unique mechanics that I'm going to introduce into the game, but it's not quite ready for this video, so stay tuned for future devlogs. I can't stress enough the value of getting away from the computer and just putting a pen to paper to start fleshing out some ideas, drawing out characters, drawing out level designs, and I know this next part might sound stupid, but I also went and searched what type of rooms would you necessarily have in an organization or research center or a space station for example just to give me an idea of what the structure would look like for this space research center once i had a better idea of my level design and a structure in place the first thing i did is went on to the unity asset store and had a look at what type of assets i could use personally for me i wanted to have a nice mix of what i need to make myself in blender in order to make my game my own and unique so things like the player the enemies the weapons gadgets and different mechanics in the game that is going to be you know, absolutely central to make the game unique. Both things like windows, chairs, tables, offices, whatever it is, if I can find something that fits my game, that will really speed up production and development. So just bear that in mind when you're making your own game. Once I'd found the assets that fit my theme and level design, I started actually building out the game. I really wanted to create a sense of confinement for the player when he first wakes up and he walks through all these narrow corridors, only to make his way into a giant open area and see that, well, I'm in space. So going back to my point earlier, one item I thought that would be important for me to make were the planets. So I went into Blender and I managed to make these planets by watching a lot of YouTube tutorials because I can't make sh So with the story in mind, I thought to myself, what would a research center in space need for the well-being of the employees? So this open area you see really is a cafeteria for all the employees where they come and eat their lunch and, you know, check out giant planet next to them that would probably absorb them because I don't think the space station can be that close to a planet without but actually you can enter the orbit and stay in the orbit and and it should be fine because that's what we did with the sat satellites in space something else employees need for their well-being is an arcade room Now, just for people who are probably going to ask, I found these assets on a combination of the Unity Assets Store and the Google Assets as well. Now, the next notable difference you've probably seen is the player. Previously, I'd made a decision to use a full character model for the player, but I realized this is an FPS game and maybe the whole model is necessary. And also, it was the first model I ever made in Blender, and I don't think it really fits into the theme of the game. So I went back into Blender and decided to give him a bit of a refresh. And this time, I just wanted to make some hands, because I think that's the only key thing the player is going to be looking at. And again, I'm really looking for people's feedback, so feel free to join the Discord or give me your feedback in the YouTube video. I may go back and make some legs for the character, because I do have like a cool sliding effect. So I'll see how that looks in terms of gameplay. My thinking around this choice was that it was going to make it easier as well for me to add different weapons in the game. So I can literally go in and just have to animate the hands and then I can put more focus into animating the weapons and the hands rather than having to worry about the whole player character and for whatever reason I also decided to program in the ability to go upstairs instead of just using box colliders which would have been easier and taken less time but look he can go upstairs now look he's he, he can bounce up the stairs wow 
Now by far the biggest development I've made in the game since the summer and what you're all probably here for is around creating a gameplay moment. So what do I mean by a gameplay moment? And some of you have probably heard me mention this in the past. For me a gameplay moment is any part of your gameplay or game mechanics that makes your game unique. And if I take a couple of steps back from the outset I wanted to create a sci-fi game set in space with an eerie setting and a team. So with that in mind, the next question to pose is, well, what type of enemies are gonna supplement this team and story direction? Well, some of the games, which you can probably tell by now, which have inspired this particular game, for me are games like Dead Space Prey, and even dare I say the Bioshock series on a different level. I believe choosing robots as our enemies would supplement our sci-fi setting, but giving their behaviors more of a creepy undertone or nature, uh, kind of like an eerie feeling. So what I'm getting at is this story is obviously set in the future, and in this case you would probably have robots helping the people on the facility. But what if all of these robots were turned against the humans on the ship? So you're probably thinking, okay, you got your robot, you got your enemy, where's the where's the gameplay moment? You're so full of a BAM! Wow. I'd always loved playing games set in space, or just games with a great ambience and story, and one of those games was definitely Dead Space. Now obviously Dead Space took a lot of inspiration from games like Resident Evil 4, but they did their own take on it, and that's what made it so unique. And I really liked the idea of approaching enemies in different ways, rather than your traditional shoot the enemies, they go down, they go boom boom. You beat the enemy, everyone says, good job, here's a medal. Um, I don't really know where I was headed with that joke, so just... Just laugh, please, please, my freaking... Just just laugh, I really, I just need your approval. And in Dead Space, you couldn't just shoot the enemy. You had to focus on dismembering its limbs in order to defeat the enemy. So I thought to myself, what if you apply that concept, but to robots? Because I mean, robots, you can do a lot of fun things with them. You can make them explode in so many different ways. And I think that really gave me an idea in terms of what if you could dismember the robot. Great, we finally have a gameplay moment. We did it, guys. We, we, um... How do you dismember a robot? With the idea in mind of being able to dismember this enemy robot, we had to approach Blender from two different perspectives. More precisely, we needed to create two different enemy models. The first being the actual enemy itself. The second you probably could have approached in many different ways. I just found it easier having all of the different dismembered parts in one a blender project and then unparent and prefab the different game objects and one of the ways i wanted to make these robots look more intimidating or just to create an eerie feeling is to expose a lot of the inner works of the robot in order to do that i expose the wires for the robot's different limbs and that way those wires act as an indicator for the player to shoot at the wires so that you can dismember the robot after a good few weeks we finally had our robot finished and it was ready to be imported into blender hold on a sec we forgot the animations not to fear, Mixamo is here. I'm gonna steal your animation. Now for the dismemberment effect, I thought it'd be really cool to add some dangling wire so that when you shoot off an enemy limb, you can actually see that dangling wire effect. The next step was to make the parts that we were gonna dismember with the idea in mind that they would have wires dangling off of the different parts. For whatever reason, I felt like this was gonna be crucial for the enemy, but in hindsight, it did just add a lot more weeks to my development time. Because what I essentially did is I made all these wires and then I said, okay, to make them dangle, I'm gonna use rigid bodies and add them to the armature is kind of like the way you add uh, the ragdoll physics effect in Unity, which is something I also added to the robot. The downside of that is I had to go around and add a lot of rigid bodies to the wires and then just make sure that they had weight painting on them and then make sure that I'm not using too many pixels so that the game doesn't crash or polygons. Delete one phase, pass it around, 1000 milli. Hold on a second. How do we dismember? How do we dismember this? I had a few ideas in mind of how I was going to approach dismemberment, all centered around unparroting and parroting the different objects through code, and then instantiating the different parts of the robot that get blown off with rigid bodies added to them and a bit of force for effect, and also some animations. But before I went ahead, I wanted to see what was the best way to structure this code and how it would work with the other scripts I have in place. So I just want to give a special mention to some of these YouTubers I looked at. They had some really good ideas, and if you are focused on making dismembered enemies, they they've got a more detailed guideline on how you can do it. In my scenario, I approach it a bit differently just because it's more comfortable for me. Once I had finished creating the full enemy in Blender, the next step was to import this into Unity to make sure that the enemy was still working correctly with the previous script we had in place with the prototype enemy. I also thought it'd be really cool to have a ragdoll effect on the enemy so that when we shoot it and defeat it, it would fall down like a ragdoll. I always think adding physics to your game can be quite a lot of fun for the player and improves the overall gaming experience. The one thing you always 
always need to be mindful though is the impact on performance if you're making too many physics calls, but for the most part it should be fine. Before moving on to the second stage and creating the dismembered parts that we're going to break off of the robot, I wanted to just make sure that everything was working correctly. Yep, looks fine to me. <laughs> Before moving on to the programming and how exactly I was going to structure the scripts, I needed to set up all of the different parts because remember they were imported into Unity as one single FBX file. So I had to divide up all of the parts and make prefabs of those that are going to be dismembered from the enemy. And then I also had the damaged parts which are going to be staying on the robot. So they would be added to things like the beginning of the robot's arm, leg and head. At its core, the dismemberment logic is quite simple. When the player shoots, a ray is cast from the player's weapon towards the enemy. If the ray hits a collider with the tag dismember enemy, then we know we can dismember this part of the enemy. And the great thing about setting up the ragdoll physics in Unity prior to looking at our dismemberment logic is that it will automatically apply box colliders to all of the different joints that you added to the tool in Unity. So now when a ray is cast and we hit a collider with a dismember enemy tag on it, we can tell our script to unparent that particular part of the enemy from the overall object. But you might be thinking, what if I created an enemy with just one mesh collider and there was no parts I could dismember? Member. Don't worry, there is a great way around this. It was definitely one of the challenges I faced, but after searching a while on Google and YouTube, I managed to find a solution thanks to many others who have gone through a similar process. And it's very simple. Instead of removing that object, what if we scale down that object so that it would completely disappear? And this explains why I created the damaged robot parts. The idea is that when a ray hits the box collider, we would access the transform.local scale, reduce it in size, and then set the damaged robot part as active. So in summary, I have two scripts, a dismember script and a weapon script. The weapon script is what I had previously used to fire rays at enemies, and if we hit them, they take some damage, they drop items, and we apply some particle effects. So all I needed to do in the weapon script is create a reference to the dismember script, and then pass the raycast hit variable as a parameter so that we could then take action within our dismember script. In our dismember script, I set up an array of string variables called robot parts, and these would be used to match which parts of the robot we hit in terms of the collider. Now I have to warn you this method can be a bit tricky and a bit vulnerable to mistakes because you do have to match the names of your robot parts to the string array that you created, which you can see me setting up here. So effectively we would loop through the string array until we found a match between the name of the collider that we hit and our string array of names. And if we found a match we would scale that part of the robot using vector3.0. We would also instantiate the game object that we created as prefabs earlier and then add colliders to those parts so they don't fall through the map. In order to make this fun we would also add a rigid body component to those instantiated prefabs and then add an explosive force so that you get a cool effect. I also went back and changed our placeholder sound effect for the bullet impact because um, sounds like we're hitting pots and pans here. Next I wanted to add a really satisfying sound effect for when we blew off the different parts of the robot. And I do think I did a very professional job if I do say so myself. And the gaming moment we had discussed early on was finally starting to take fold and take shape. The security arc robot would be patrolling a particular area. If the player walked close to that robot or within range of the robot, he would then begin to chase the player. But if the player managed to get away and move out of range, the robot would go back to patrolling the area that he was assigned. However, if the player decided to defend himself and shoot the enemy in order to get XP and drops from the enemy, then the player would have to try and slow down the enemy by effectively taking it apart. I know what you're thinking, but what if you shoot the legs? I mean, he'll just continue running at you because because that's the animation that I have and I didn't add any animation for that. So I went back into Blender and edited one of the Mixamo animations that I had used, basically making the enemy prone so that he's kind of creeping and crawling towards the player. However, something was still missing. It didn't feel quite right. Again, I used a similar approach of mixing together royalty-free audio that I found, as well as my voice, and then editing it within Audacity to give it different sound effects. 
finally the last part of this gameplay experience was to add the rigid bodies to the wires to get that dangling effect. This is where sadly I hit a massive stumbling block and I did feel pretty crappy that I wasted so much time on trying to get these wires set up in Blender as well as Unity. However, it wasn't a complete waste of time. I did learn a lot throughout the process and I was able to actually access all of the individual armatures of the wires. It's just that I did not possess enough knowledge of all the different rigid bodies and all of the different joints and springs, uh, as well as probably a lot of mathematical knowledge you'd need to get the desired effect. Given this was the last step of the process and I'd been working on this for months, I really felt like I needed more time and a lot more effort to try and get this right. So it is something I'm going to be coming back to, but I just didn't want to hinder my progress that I've been making and take way, way too much longer to uh, get this video out. The great thing about game development and programming, however, is that there are multiple ways to achieve the solution that you want. In my case, it did feel like I was conceding I had lost and I just resorted to animating the wires in the end. And although at the moment this is a very small and subtle effect, I might look at making the wires a bit bigger so that the player can actually see it. So for example, if you shoot the enemy in the head, the wires now create an animation so it looks more realistic. And that is it guys, that is my gameplay moment. I am genuinely really excited to see how I can develop this further in the next devlogs to come. I really want to see what I can do when I add more enemies to the scene. And what if I start looking at different weapons? How do the different weapons behave in terms of dismembering enemies? I have some really unique ideas of how I can influence the gameplay moment through different weapons or even environmental effects. But I'd be eager to hear what you guys have to say. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this idea, what you think of this game. Feel free to join my Discord and send me your ideas or just chat about what you'd like to see in the game. Also, if you want to support the development of this game or just want to support me on this channel, feel free to head over to my Patreon and become a member. Needless to say, as well as helping me out massively, you will also get access to exclusive content that you'll only find on the Patreon channel. And for the top tier members of Patreon, you will get a copy of the game for free when it releases on Steam. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe, like, and hit the notification button so that you can be updated when my next video comes out. And feel free also guys to follow me on all the social media channels, I'll have the links in the description where you can get some further updates in terms of my game progress and new video ideas that I have going on. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to drink some coffee, code, and I will catch you all in the next video.